Google Forms for data and also for assessment. Keeping everything organized in one place, all the information that flows through the classroom is so difficult, but Google Forms make it much easier. Google Forms are part of Google Drive. You, to get in, you need a Gmail account. Your Gmail account unlocks your Google Drive. A lot of school districts are moving to Google Apps for Education, and you might already have a Gmail account and you didn't even know it. It might be your school district email. And so if you don't have a school district Gmail account, you can go in on the other side, just a regular every person going in. You can do that and log in and create all these all the things that are part of Google Drive. So Google Forms is just one part of it. If you look at the icons uh, next to the Google Drive triangle, you have word processing, spreadsheets, then you have presentation, the next one is forms, and then there's a few other ones, but forms is what we're going to be talking about today. The important thing to understand about Google Drive, if this is your first lesson on Google Drive, is to understand the sharing part. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time on really understanding that. But what you learn here applies to the word processing, spreadsheets, everything else. The sharing piece is how you communicate with the world or you keep everything private. So Google Drive is really your storage space in the sky and it is your productivity suite that you don't need extra software for. And the key is, the reason it's they call it in the, in the sky, is it's cloud computing. So you can create on any device and you can make connections between the devices. This is what Google Drive looks like on, once you log in and you have some things to create. And we are going to start with, under the Create, you're going to look for Form. Look for Google, you're going to just look for the form. And that's what we want to start with. Now, here is the building blocks of a form. First thing in the upper left-hand corner, you need to title your form. I always forget I end up with 10 untitled forms. Title your form, and then you can put a little description about the form. Then you start. This is important. If you need to know who the data is coming from, you need to ask that question. You might need to say, what is your first name? Second thing, what is your last name? If you track your students by student ID or number, you might want to include that. And then if you notice in the yellow field, it also says, make this a required question. And I strongly suggest that you make those, um, those connection, connection pieces required. If not, you might end up with data. You don't know who it came. It's like when you get a paper and nobody's names on it. You're going to get the same information, the same data, but you won't know who it's from. And so make sure you ask the questions. So you're going to begin to build your questions. This is sample question one. Go ahead. When you're ready to add an item, just go up to the upper left-hand corner, add item, and then that'll give you another question. You can always delete later, but you want to go ahead and, and create your items. And the great part about Google Forms, unlike some other tools that I've used, is you can go from a text question to another type of question. So everything can be unique and different. You got a lot of choices. When you create an item on a form, text is that just the, the small box, what's your name? Paragraph text, much more detailed. You can go ahead and actually have students submit their essays that way. Multiple choice, you can go ahead and uh, do a variety of things with multiple choice now. They've added some nice features there. Check boxes. If you just want, you know, yes, no, maybe, whatever, you can go ahead and make check boxes. Choose from a list. If you're in a large school district, you might say, what is your school? And then you can have them pick from the list. And that way, once you get the data, you can go ahead and search and sort by that information. I really like the scale. That's when I can say, between one to five, tell me, are you an expert at this? So I really like that. In Grid, I haven't even played with yet. If you're going to get into long surveys, those section headers and page breaks really help break up the form. So when somebody looks and go, oh, there's 25 questions, I never, that, you know, that's too much. The section headings just are a good little visual breakup of your data. Now, we're not about, we're all about making us look good here, and there's close to a hundred different 
backgrounds that you can put for your form. And so you can search. As of right now, I don't think you can make your own, but I'm sure that's going to change very quickly. And so you can go ahead and pick your background and apply it to your form. So your plain looking form here gets a nice little dress up and you can always change what template you pick and you want to change by the season, change by the season. You could just pick it, pick a different theme. Here's one that I made and I gave um, some introductory information if needed, you know, rate yourself one to, what did I do, zero to five. And then when I do that, I can go, they can go ahead and just click on um, where they rate themselves. So I use this as a pre and a post for some of the workshops that I do so I can see where, where everybody comes in and the growth, which is really fun to, to take a look at. Now, here is where forms get confusing. You might have to write yourself a note on this one. Forms. Form, let's get a visual. Pretty, collect the information. This is the pretty side that your students, your parents, your colleagues, this is the pretty side for the data collection. But as you're building each of those questions, behind the scenes, a spreadsheet is being built for your data to be dumped into. And that's the not so pretty part about the form. And But this is what you need. This is the data. So as soon as they hit submit at the bottom of your form, you get all of this. It's time stamped for you, so you know exactly when it was done. And um, depending what information you asked, and in this case, I asked your first name and the last initial. So that's the first thing that appears there. And then we go on to uh, you know, the questions that I asked. And I asked scale questions. So we're zero to five. And so that really right there has some real great information. But what's hard is here's pretty, here's the back engine, and knowing when to go between the two. So when you're in the not so pretty spreadsheet, see across the top, one of the menu items is form. And there in form, you click, and now you can go to start accepting responses because you can say when you want to start and stop. You can go to the live form. So when you want to go see pretty, you can go there and you can show a summary of responses. From that menu, this is the show summary of responses. I love this because I can instantly have a snapshot of where my class is and then I can modify my instruction based on what they're coming in with. So here I have some people that no Skype, some that don't, but I can just plan my instruction. I look at the percentages over to the right. It helps me pace and plan. And when we're differentiating instruction for students, we need to know where their baseline, where they're coming in, so then we can tailor our instruction to them. And this is a great way to do it. You can set up your pre-assessments. And a lot of us aren't, do not have the luxury of having a device in front of every student. So you can say things like, before next Tuesday, I need you to complete this form. And they could do it at home anytime they can get to an internet device. Now, you can send this form to others through email, but that's kind of old, ugh, yuck. And a lot of you work with students that don't have emails. So I want to show you a variety of ways to share this. So email, old, we're used to it, we can send it. It's kind of like an attachment. Here you go. And it, uh, the description always goes with it and then we can go ahead. If that's where you are, send it through email. But we have options, everybody. And the sharing settings. All right. This is, roll your sleeves up, this is Google Drive sharing. No matter what kind of document, you're going to have the same types of questions. Who has access? You can always add people through email, but that link across the top changes depending on what you set here. So that's really important is once you set who can access it, who can edit it, all that other stuff, then you go ahead and get the link. That link could go to your web page. It could be put on your blog. It could be emailed out. So there's lots of ways that you can go ahead and do that. Well, let's start here. First of all, sharing. Who can see your form? Public on the web, anybody? 
Well, they still have to find that big address, and but that's one option. No sign-in required. Now, anyone with the link, no sign-in again is required. Good for use with students. Private, only the people you give permission to can access. There is a sign-in required. So you might want to think about that if it is a private thing, but never, ever, even though it says private, don't use student names. Don't use this for like your team meetings about students and things like that because it's still out on the internet. So don't, don't think about using it in that way. Now, access. Now, anyone can, no sign in required. You gotta remember this. Can they view? Can they edit? Every document in Google Drive, you've got to set the sharing settings. It's not blanket across the board. It's every single document. So you want to make sure that you, you want to do that. Maybe you don't want people to edit your form. You want just their feedback. You want their information. So make sure you just think through that before you go. I always, I always suggest that you send it to um, a colleague, have them check the permissions. It's one of those things you've really just got to get used to how to set these up. And I, I'll tell you, I feel like I do it all the time. And sometimes I just do it wrong and I don't know why. Okay, now there's a template gallery of forms that are all available for you that you can go ahead and modify and use. When you start to create a form, one of the options is templates. Go in, search, see if there's something there. You can't believe the talented people that have come before us. And I can't imagine how fast this is going to grow over the next couple of years of more templates and more resources. Really, we collect a lot of the same types of data. And so let's not reinvent the wheel. You would get like um, Laura made the first one. You, if that was the one that you wanted, you'd take that template and you'd rename that in your Google Drive. Really remember, try to remember that. Always rename a form if you share it um, with a colleague or something like that because you don't want their data to end up in your form. Be careful about that. Now, there is the ability to make self-grading forms. So you could actually create a test. I couldn't remember how to do it. So I did a quick Google search and I found the people that can direct us. And of course, I always rely on YouTube to uh, help me walk through this. And what I love about YouTube is I need to start and stop. And because I'm not great with my formulas in a spreadsheet, and a lot of the people that make these are really strong in that area. So I start, I stop. That's one of the reasons I like having access to YouTube so I can learn at my pace. Now, this is what I was trying to find. I couldn't remember the name. Flubberoo is how I'm calling it. Well, I could be wrong. But what it is, is there uh, Google Forms. This is an add-on to Google Forms where you can go ahead and have students create a form and it self-grades it. Self-grades. Yay. And then on the spreadsheet, you have the results for everybody. This is it's a little more complicated. It's a little um, different. But if you can imagine not lugging home bags and bags of paper, this might be worth investigating. I strongly suggest go find your math department. Go find somebody real strong in um, uh, spreadsheets and formulas and have them help you create your self-guided form. Well, we're scratching the surface on Google Drive, but Google Forms for data collection and assessment, absolutely essential today. And when you make the form one time, you're going to save it in your Google Drive and you can use it for years to come. Share, everybody share as a department. Agree, I'll make this form, you make this form. And that way we're not all reinventing the wheel. So enjoy Google Forms, it's one of my favorite things in Google Drive. Thanks.